A FOX NEWS ALERT AND SEARCH CREWS IN RUSSIA LOCATING THE FLIGHT RECORDER FROM A RUSSIAN MILITARY JET THAT CRASHED INTO THE BLACK SEA THIS WEEKEND. INVESTIGATORS ARE NOW WORKING TO EXTRACT THE DATA FROM THE BLACK BOX AFTER IT WAS FOUND INTACT. ALL 92 PEOPLE ON THAT JET ARE PRESUMED DEAD. Joining us now, Robert Mark, a commercial pilot and publisher of JetWine.com. Uh, that plane is, is sort of the Russian version of the 727, right? Three engines all in the rear. But how unusual is it for three engines to just fail at the same time? Three engines to go out at the same time within, you know, uh, 60, 80 seconds after takeoff is incredibly unusual. Uh, I mean, that means that it's probably going to turn out to be something like the fuel, that would, something that would have affected all three engines at the same time. There's, they are suggesting, as I understand from Russian media, they're suggesting that this was not terrorism. Can you rule that out that quickly? I don't know how they could possibly do that. I think it's way too early, uh, but what we do know is that the airplane wasn't very high in the air, maybe a thousand feet, John. I mean, and you know, a thousand feet when something happens, uh, you don't have a whole lot of time. And they were out over the water, and uh, they didn't have a sully event. Yeah, I mean, it, it potentially could have happened this, the same way if if the pilots uh, had been able to pull off the, si the kind of miracle on the Hudson landing that he pulled off. Uh, they, if they could have done that on the Black Sea, why do you suppose? that wasn't apparently possible in this case. Well, the one thing that I haven't been able to verify yet is whether this happened in daylight or at, in, in the dark. Uh, in the daylight at, at that altitude, uh, it's, it's really hard anyway. I mean, the, the Sully event on the Hudson was probably a one in a million. But if it was dark uh, or if, the, you know, it would have been virtually impossible to know where the water was in order to pull up in time. There are, um, it's been a bad week for Russian aviation. There have been a couple of fatal crashes in Russia involving Russian made planes. And now there's uh, something called the Sukhoi Superjet, uh, which has been grounded by a Mexican airline because they found cracks in the fuselage. Overall, how would you assess the state of aviation there? Well, the, uh, if you look at the main airline, Aeroflot, years ago people didn't want to fly Aeroflot because they were flying airplanes like this 154 that crashed. But Aeroflot as an airline has, has upgraded. It's pretty much all an Airbus fleet these days. It's modern except for the Sukhois. Uh, the Sukhois are a relatively new uh, regional jet built, built in Russia. Uh, you know, we're going to have to do some investigating as far as the, these cracks go because there are other airlines that are flying these airplanes. I remember taking an Aeroflot flight in Siberia once. I was very happy to find that I was on board a Boeing 737, but that was some <laughs> years ago. Um, I, you have no, no, note my astonishment that you're flying Aeroflot. Well, it was, as I said, some time ago. So what about, uh, what about the lessons for American aviation? I mean, you know, we read about U.S. Uh, airlines trying to cut costs, trying to, you know, keep expenses very low so they can keep fares low. Are, are there parallels uh, between what's, what the Russians are experiencing and what some American companies are doing? Well, I, I think, you know, certainly in the U.S., we have an exemplary safety record, especially the last few years, uh, where we've been seeing most of the accidents around the world. Uh, they're happening in, in areas where the, you know, the uh, technology is not quite as good. Look at that accident in Colombia last month. Uh, it's certainly, you know, it, it comes down to the crew, crew training, to the technology, how well the airplanes are maintained, and we do a great job here in the U.S. Well, we absolutely do. I uh, don't want that point to be lost on our viewers. Robert Mark from JetWine.com. Thank you. Thanks, John.